Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Scott Murphy. I'm the city engineer for the city of Montrose. Um, I'm here today to talk about the uh, Woodgate realignment uh, project. Uh, we've reached, reached a point in the project where we can, uh, uh, we've gotten far enough along through the design and land acquisitions that we can start um, sharing a lot of this material with the public. Um, so typically this would be done through an open house format. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, uh, it's coming to you live from my house. Um, so we'll run through this recording. And then at the end, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us um, by email or telephone, and I'll have contact information then. Um, so let me get a couple of things up here. I'll screen share and uh, uh, run through the presentation, um, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so here's the, should see the uh, cover slide there. Um, so uh, topics we'll cover today. Uh, I wanted to dive into the overall kind of driver for the project from a traffic and safety standpoint. Uh, talk through some of the previous master plans uh, that have been done in this area. Uh, run through, you know, as part of our design, we did a lot of traffic modeling and evaluation of alternatives. So I'll run through that. Uh, and then go into the details on the selected alternative and uh, the path forward for the project. Um, and let me pull up some drawing tools here, just one second. Um, so for those not familiar with the project area, when we talk about the Woodgate realignment, um, this here is the existing Woodgate Road. Um, this here is East Oak Grove. You have Walgreens, US Bank. Um, we're kind of talking about this project area right here. Um, Right now, Woodgate dumps out and you have this bottleneck on Townsend and zigzagging of people coming across. And I'm sure you've all experienced the fun that is that intersection. Um, so moving on to project drivers first. Um, so, um, you know, this, I always say the secret is out in Montrose. Um, it's a great place to be. A lot of people know it, um, both from a, a living here and from a tourism standpoint. Um, and we're seeing it in our traffic. So. Right now, South Townsend um, near the product area sees about 20,000 vehicles or 27,000 vehicles per day. And that's um, right here by Woodgate. Um, you know, a lot of out of towners, they funnel straight through, come down Townsend here. Uh, San Juan sees a lot of the vehicular traffic. And unfortunately, we do see some people whose cell phones route them down through, you know, Hillcrest through town, even though we do have our code doesn't allow commercial vehicles um, on those streets. Um, doesn't stop the iPhone from telling them to go there. Um, with continued uh, traffic growth, it's important that we do have alternate routes for Townsend though, um, especially for um, local residents. You know, So you have a lot of the residential um, areas here. You know, A lot of the commercial areas are down here where people are going south of town. Um, we need a good way for them to get to where they wanna to get to without having to funnel onto Townsend. And that helps. That's kind of one of the main drivers that this project plays into. Um, when you start talking about alternate routes to Townsend, you know, on the west side, um, you know, we're generally talking about Grand Avenue, which joins into Rio Grande. Um, long term, that will punch down through to, or is planned to punch through to uh, River Landing development down by Target. And, uh, you know, that'll help take some of the pressure off of this area because right now this does funnel right to Townsend at East Oak Grove. Um, you know, obviously Chapita on, on the other side of the hogback, um, that's a county road, um, but does funnel a lot of the vehicles coming from that area. Um, you know, I'm going down south to um, go to work and things of that sort. But uh, um, on the east side, you know, our two kind of primary alternates for north south to Townsend are Hillcrest Drive and 6700. Um, Hillcrest, we recently uh, finished the South Hillcrest extension, which brought us down to East Oak Grove Road. Um, that is where Hillcrest will end. You know, it'd be nice if it could have gone through to Ogden. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, the neighborhood's there and, and we don't plan to go through that. Um, so that's why we're kind of left to make Woodgate somewhat of an extension of, of Hillcrest as an alternate to Townsend. Um, going further east, there's 6700 Road. We do have plans to connect this missing link. Um, and it does connect down to Ogden. It does take a jog around this neighborhood here. Um, but uh, and that kind of becomes part of the, the main roadway artery also and does um, kind of play into this project. And so, um, you know, we're working on all those things. Those are all long range plans to, to give alternate routes. You know, unfortunately right now, 
the capacity East Oak Grove and Rio Grande, if you look at this zooming area here, isn't great. Um, you have this bottleneck, so you have a lot of traffic coming down Oak Grove and ends up just on this 500 foot reach of Townsend um, that really acts as a bottleneck um, for people that ultimately just want to get back onto Woodgate Road. Um, so that's some of the stuff we're looking at with this project. You know, you add to that the zigzagging of people coming off Rio Grande, um, the queue behind this light that then backs up um, people trying to get off of Woodgate here uh, makes it a pretty um, low capacity intersection. And as that traffic volume continues to grow, you know, traffic volume is kind of unique in that it, it hits a cliff at some point to where, you know, a 10% increase in volume can add, add a 50% increase in delay. Um, and more or less gridlock and intersection. Um, we're not there yet, um, but we're trying to stay out ahead of it and uh, uh, make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, you know, the reality is, is again, Montrose is a great place. A lot of people are coming here. Um, we need to give them somewhere to go. And we want to try and keep them from shortcutting through neighborhoods. So, you know, if you don't give them a good way to go, they're going to, you know, one of the areas we experience problems is shortcutting through uh, Vista San Juan, people finding their own way through, um, which is funneling, um, traffic onto areas where we don't want. We want we want the core traffic to stay onto our uh, minor arterial routes where it belongs because um, they generally just take the path of least resistance. And so moving on to the next slide, um, I'll go into uh, some of the master plans that have been done for this area uh, that uh, speak to the Woodgate realignment project. So. Um, the idea isn't new. It's been around as early as I can tell from our 2008 comprehensive plan. Um, this one here on the left is a snapshot of that plan. Um, so it shows Woodgate Road here and, and the realignment coming out to East Oak Grove Road. A um, couple other ones on this uh, sheet. You can see the South Hillcrest extension was envisioned at that time. Um, that one has been completed. Um, another street project that will play into this one is there is they did envision a backage road of sorts um, going north from East Oak Grove. They have it connecting to Niagara. I think realistically the farthest it could go um, because of land constraints would be Church Street. Um, but what that area does is give a good way out um, for anybody who's tried to hang a left out of Murdoch's um, knows how difficult that can be. Um, so this ultimately would play in with tie in with this project um, long term. There's no immediate plans for it in the near future, but. Uh, uh, give people a way out and get out to a signal if you were southbound on Townsend. Um, the other plan that kind of speak to it also in the past was, um, so Townsend Avenue is uh, controlled by CDOT, um, uh, the Colorado Department of Transportation. They prepare access control plans for their highways through urban corridors um, to try and kind of create orchestrated and kind of um, consolidated access points to re increase safety and reduce um, uh, you know, just congestion associated with multiple access points in close proximity to each other. In this area, that plan envisioned uh, the Woodgate realignment coming up here to East Oak Grove. Um, both of these plans envisioned keeping a connection um, at Townsend, which we'll go into a little bit later. Uh, this plan had it remaining a right in, right out intersection, so it would be restricted, but uh, um, we'll go into why that doesn't work later. Um, when we get into the alternatives, but uh, um, yeah, this and this one, you know, these lines are kind of drawn just as schematics intended to show a connection. They don't necessarily represent an alignment. And so when we get into the design on these, that's when we uh, get deep into the various pros and cons of, of different ways to route that roadway. So moving on to what we did look at. Um, so Back in early 2020, we hired a design team to uh, work on this project. Uh, the first part of that uh, was getting a, a kind of full-blown traffic study of the area to look at all the various alternatives and also look at the existing conditions. Um, these models look at uh, current volumes as well as anticipated future growth of traffic volumes. Um, so we can really understand how they're going to perform now and into the future. Um, once we had that, we then looked at all the various um, alternatives um, for where that road could possibly be aligned and kind of configure this intersection in this section of the road. Um, so the first, and I'll run through all those um, with marking up this screen here. I'll kind of start from simplest and least impactful, lowest cost up to the 
kind of more robust um, and long-term viable um, or alternatives with long, long, better long-term viability. Um, so I'll just run through those so you can understand all the various things we looked at. And, uh, and then I'll get into uh, what was selected as a preferred alternative in the next slide. Um, so the first one we look at, we do this on all projects, is, is the do nothing alternative. So um, we wanna make sure that we're not just trading one problem for another, that the project is actually warranted and, uh, and, and justified in its expense and impact. Um, so for that, that, in that instance, for this project, that means you know, just leaving Woodgate connected to Townsend as it is and running the models to see what it looks like. Um, it became pretty obvious that it would not work um, as you get into, um, as you just get more traffic building on essentially all of the surrounding streets, um, you know, as development and growth occurs, uh, it really starts to approach essentially gridlock of the intersection, which would, you know, functionally it looks like waiting three to four cycles of a light to get through. Um, and that would be problematic, you know, both for pass-through motorists, local motorists, and the adjacent neighborhoods where, you know, shortcutting would only increase. Um, the next we looked at is looking at how it, ha how it was laid out in the um, previous plans, you know, the schematics from the CDOT plan. You can actually see this is a piece of right-of-way and this is a piece of right-of-way that we own um, that kind of stem from some of those previous efforts. Uh, what it would do is come down Woodgate, go down Arland, and then turn north to come out on East Oak Grove, as we have shown there. That one didn't get too far in our uh, evaluations um, for a couple of reasons. One, obviously, we're trying to get as much thorough put on Woodgate. Woodgate's the primary road. We want nice, smooth um, transitions and speed for the roadway. Uh, in this case, you know, hard 90 degree turns or putting an intersection right here are problematic for that goal. Um, and then you add in, you know, you're, you're taking what was a, a kind of a private residential street, now making it a minor arterial um, is also um, problematic, obviously, for these landowners. So we didn't want to do that. Um, keeping this and the Woodgate intersection open um, also really makes them, uh, the traffic kind of blow up. So uh, what happens, you, you come off of Townsend, you get into this area, you're now um, have to maneuver an intersection right after that, even if it was a roundabout, you can end up with queues that could spill back into Townsend. Um, and then just, you know, awkward geometry here that makes this generally unsafe. Um, you don't have as good a thoroughput coming down Woodgate, which is the goal, and also ends up occupying a lot more land and making this area unusable. So um, for development. So um, that played into uh, going down Ireland was not really a viable alternative for us. Um, so the next we looked at was coming down Woodgate here and then coming out right behind U.S. Bank. So this is U.S. Bank right here. Um, and doing that, a uh, couple problems. You, uh, you're just too close to the intersection of Oak Grove. So, you know, you have all the maneuvering here in between the two intersections, the maneuvering into uh, Walgreens to the north and then queues at the intersection as traffic pressure builds here. Um, it work, you know, for the near term, but, you know, five, 10 years out, um, it starts to really kind of fall apart from a traffic standpoint and uh, uh, wasn't a really viable long-term alternative. And what we don't want to do is, you know, invest in a project that's only going to last five to 10 years. We want, we're looking at these for the long term to get in, do it once and do it right and make it um, functional for all and match in well with all future uses and development in the area. Um, so next we looked at, so really kind of drove through the studies that we wanted that road to come out as far east as possible. Um, um, and so that really puts the road coming out up here um, near the east end by Oak Grove where the comprehensive plan and CDOT's plan have it. Um, you know, we gotta work through how you get there, but to, um, to get the proximity from the light at the signal here at Oak Grove and Townsend, um, but then the secondary benefit to line this up with a future backage road that would go north of East Oak Grove Road. Um, so with that in mind, we started looking at how we can get there. Um, you know, so one is to try and do it without any right-of-way impacts to either of these houses down here. You know, the problem with those is the uh, turning radii are, radii are just too small. Um, so it's hard to get good smooth fluid movement and not have, you know, think of a trailer dragging into the opposing lane and think of that, things of that sort. So um, we looked at that. We looked at just kind of clipping this corner um, purchasing this house here, 
uh, to facilitate that. Um, we started with that and then in actually working through the landowner, um, there's a single owner that owns both of these houses and was willing to work with us um, to get the road alignment as, as smooth as possible. So um, what we actually landed on was um, one that runs through here. And this is a bad cartoon. I'll show you a better picture in the next slide. Um, but it has the advantage of really making the road a smooth, uh, nice feeling road, um, which improves safety, visibility, um, thoroughput, you know, all the things that we're looking for um, with this project. So that actually ended up becoming the um, preferred alternative. And I'll go to the next slide here so you can see what that looks like. Um, so here's the footprint of that uh, project. So don't get scared when you see a roundabout. Um, that's a future phase. So the initial phase of the project would bring us up to East Oak Grove as a T intersection. So you'd have a stop sign on East Oak Grove. And then this roundabout, you know, as you get future traffic from the north and as traffic volumes increase on East Oak Grove, you would start to warrant a more formal intersection there. Could be signalized, uh, more likely it'd probably be a roundabout since not on the primary or off of Townsend. Um, generally, we just have signals on Townsend and Maine. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's a future aspect. This initial would just be the road itself. Um, so the road template would look kind of like East Oak Grove does. You'd have a center turn lane uh, down the middle, through lane in each direction, and bike lanes on each side. Um, the sidewalk kind of pedestrian network would stay on the eastern side here um, for a couple of reasons. Um, you know, it obviously ties into Oak Grove, can tie into existing sidewalks on the eastern side of Woodgate. Um, right now, we don't have any sidewalks on the west side of Woodgate and the way this area developed, it would be pretty difficult to get some added. So um, in the foreseeable future, there won't be any on this side. Um, so we didn't want to invest into a sidewalk to nowhere. Um, and then we kind of take comfort in that there's the sidewalk network that runs down Townsend and Oak Grove on the west side already anyway. So you know, a lot of people, if they're walking through this area, they're probably already walking down. You're either coming from the neighborhoods and they'll get onto the sidewalk on the east side, or you're already walking down Townsend in which case you'll stay on this western side. Um, let's see, anything I'm missing there? Um, so as far as, so obviously to build this project, um, you know, we're going across multiple private properties, these houses here, and then we had to um, work on purchasing a little sliver on this corner here. Um, these are fortunate, in the northern end, these are fortunately owned by one owner. Um, so it made the process a little easier in that we're only working with one and we can kind of work on a kind of systematic approach to uh, configuring the land and the roads to work out, you know, both for the road projects needs and the city's needs, as well as um, setting this up so that this area could someday develop. Um, right now, it's pretty difficult to develop with these kind of remnant rights of way and things of that sort um, that are in there. So it's, um, we approach it from that angle. Um, and uh, the landowner's been great to work with, and we've we've reached generally reached agreement on what that would look like. Um, so we'll be working on some of the replatting um, to get all of that fine tuned here over the next couple of months. And uh, it's great. It's a good. It's good for us when um, we can, can work work on these things on a collaborative model. Um, the alternative is to go through the eminent domain um, condemnation process, which gets very expensive for the city um, and for the owner. You know, it's it's. It's a pretty cumbersome, long drawn out process that um, it's just a lot easier to work together. And uh, uh, lucky for us, um, that's been working out. So um, uh, those of that, and then this one, this little corner here um, have generally been secured. Um, that's the point that we're able to kind of present these to the public now, um, since those negotiations are coming together and uh, um, you know, start going forward with the project. So. Um, you know, one thing I'll say about the alignment is, you know, this whole situation is kind of the best fit we can make given a lot of constraints, you know, so we have land constraints, uh, obviously existing conditions on the existing roads, um, you know, in a perfect world, we'd have a grid system where Hillcrest goes through um, all the way to Ogden. Um, the reality of it is, is, you know, there's a neighborhood there and we don't want to go through uh, 20 plus houses. And so, um, this is a, this should be a great improvement for the area and the modeling shows that, um, you know, but it's, it's, it's a best fit of the conditions we have, um, you know, for what we're given. So I think I have one more slide here, just talking through the path forward on the project. So 
Um, right now, the design is being finalized. Um, at this point, we'd love to hear um, if people you know, are at a point where the plans are still somewhat flexible. So if you have ideas um, to make the project better, um, we'd love to hear them or even just your general feedback on the project. Uh, my contact information is there. Um, um, that's my cell phone number. Uh, so you can call that at any time. Uh, and then my uh, email is there as well. Um, yeah, we're at a point where we can fine tune it. So if you have ideas of things we should be considering, we, we'd love to hear it and get them folded in. Um, ideally, we'll be finalizing the plans here and bidding the project um, in the spring of 2021 and uh, are targeting to have the project completed uh, by the end of 2021. So uh, thanks for your time to listen. I think that's all I had for this presentation here. And uh, yeah, please feel free to reach out to us and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.